Hi, and welcome back to another episode of It's Dr. Dan, and today we're going to be learning how to name acids and bases. Now, the tricky part about naming acids is, which we'll start with first, is trying to identify what type of acid it is, which has to do with what kind of ionic compound it is. So the first type is a binary acid. So when you hear the word binary or bi, that means that there's two different species that we're going to be seeing. So two elements that we will have in one of these things. So every acid, to write it, is always going to start with hydrogen, which is going to be one of our species, followed by typically some type of halogen or a sulfur uh, ion afterwards. So if we were to go through this, uh, how would we, what would be an example of that? So let's say if I had hydrogen and fluorine bonding together, how would I name this acid? So we can see that a hydrogen is out front. So this designates that this is an acid. So H is first when we're writing acids. So we see that there's two species, so one of them is hydrogen, the other one is fluorine here, so as are two different things that we are showing here. In order to name it, the first thing we're going to do is for hydrogen, we're going to write hydro, and being that it is an acid, it's going to have a different ending. So we have fluorine, which is our element here, but what we're going to do, we're only going to keep the first syllable. So we're going to keep floor. So it's floor and then ene. So that ending part is going to be dropped as a result, and that's going to be replaced with ic acid. So when we write that down again, it's going to be hydrofluor, and we're going to be replacing the ending with ic acid. So with this, right, just to kind of show off that entire naming here. So we have hydro and ic acid are the parts that we got to write for any of these different structures. So if we were going to do another one, for example, what if I gave you HBr? If we see this one, well, once again, we have those two species here. So we have hydrogen as one, bromine as the second one. So once again, this is going to start with hydro to represent the hydrogen, then being that we have bromine, so bromine, we're going to keep the beginning, so it'll be hydro, so it'll be brome, and then we're going to change the ending to ic acid, so bromine, right? So bromic acid, so hydrobromic acid. Now, if we wanted to go the other way, we could do that too. Let's say if I gave you the following name, and I said we had hydro chlor ic acid what would be the name here well we know that's always going to start with hydrogen and then we got to then try to see is all right well what about the non-metal that is in this name so if we kind of break down and see that first syllable here so what's chlor well thinking about our elements chlorine so this is going to be hcl now keep in mind when we're balancing all these Hydrogen as an ion, being that we have what we have, these are things that are have ionic charges to them. Even though these are different nonmetals, they are considered to be ions. So these are H plus and HF. So it has a minus and plus, plus and minus. So we got to keep in mind that that hydrogen has a plus charge. So we got to balance that with swap drop and whenever we have that given example. Now, what other types of things we might have? We also have oxy acids. So an oxy acid is any of the different polyatomics. So if I have, for example, uh, CO3 2 minus, this is carbonate. Carbonate is one of our polyatomics. So if we ever see anything with the eight or ite ending, they can also combine with different acids. So the way that we can remember the name change is there's stupid little mnemonics that always help us remember. So for eights, I like to remember, I hate this mnemonic. So for those of you who hate mnemonics, well, think of I hate this mnemonic, and that will tell you how to change the name. So if we have CO3 2 minus, well, how many hydrogens do we need for that structure to make it an acid? Well, if every H is a plus, and we have CO3 2 minus, that means we need 
two hydrogens, so this would be H2CO3, two minus. So how would I name it? Well, if we have carbonate, we keep the element part of the name, so we just get rid of the A ending. So in this case, it's gonna be carbonic acid would be its name. Versus, let's say if I did something that was an ite, well, if I had uh, SO2, uh, three minus, or sorry, two minus in this case, or sorry, SO3, two minus. And I wanted to show what is that name. So this is an ite species. So in this case, we would once again try to balance the two minus. So we would need two hydrogens to balance that. So we'd add an H2 there. And then how would that name be? Well, we're going to replace the ite ending of sulfite with oos. So in that case, it's going to be sulfous acid. So we still have that acid part of the name when we go through that. So let's just quickly summarize. So there's a bunch of little rules here that I wrote down so that way you can have them for yourself when you're going through these. And they all revolve around the polyatomics except for rule number five, which is about binary, which was the first thing we talked about. So two and three are about eight and eight, which we're changing the different endings. So an eight becomes ic acid. Eight becomes oos acid. Now, when you're going through any of these different little, um, uh, these polyatomics, there are some prefixes that do sometimes go with them. So for example, if you have a per or eight ending with a per prefix and eight suffix, that would become per ic acid. So I tried to color code everything for how we can remember them. So why don't we try going through a little exercise trying to name all of the following ions. So if I have ClO, ClO2 minus, ClO3 minus, ClO4 minus. So with these, what are all their endings? Well, if you kind of remember from polyatomics, these two in the middle are chlorate and chlorite. If we have one more oxygen, that would make that perchlorate. And then when we have one lex oxygen, this is hypochlorite. Now, if I wanted to make these all acids, how would I go about doing that? Well, they all have a negative one charge. So how many protons or hydrogens do I need to balance that out? Well, each one of them is going to need one H plus to balance all of these different species out. So if I want to write that down, we'd have HClO minus, ClO2 minus, ClO3 minus, and so on. Now, how do we go about naming them? Well, if we have a hypochlorite, that was rule number, or hypochlorite, that was a rule number four here. So in order to do rule number four, what that says is we keep the prefix. So it's gonna be hypo. Then being that it's, we're talking about, it's a chlorite, so it's gonna become hypochloric acid. Right, so using rule number four. Then a chlorite, which is gonna be using rule number three, kind of going a little backwards here um, with all of these. So with three, what we're gonna be doing being it's chlorite, that's gonna become chlorous acid. So it's gonna become chlorous acid because we're dropping the ite ending. We're dropping the ite ending and we're keeping hypo for that first one. So why don't I cross these out? So this skin dropped, that skin dropped. We're keeping this. Same thing for eight, right? We're dropping the eight ending and then it's going from eight to ick. So remember, I hate this mnemonic. So we're going from, uh, we're going from to chloric acid. Now for perchlorate, what are we going to do there? We're going to keep the per, drop the eight, and this is going to become perchloric acid for its name. So perchloric acid. All right, so notice how we're keeping with all these different species, we're keeping that chlor is staying for all of them when you are writing the different names. 
the big thing that is changing is that we're putting in all of these little endings here, right? So the endings are changing, which I'm highlighting here in green. Uh, the endings change sometimes, so we might keep a prefix from before. So uh, just to kind of maybe we'll show that here as well. So like the hypo and per, they're staying the same because they were in the original naming. Okay, so that is a summary of acids. What about bases? Bases are actually a little bit easier to name, believe it or not. The way that bases work is what we are looking for is a hydroxide. So there's a hydroxide polyatomic. Now, what was the charge for a hydroxide? Well, OH, this entire polyatomic is OH minus. Now, in order for it to make a base, is typically bonding to some type of cation. So we're going to have a cation bonded to a hydroxide. And a lot of the times these are in the form of alkali and alkaline earth metals, which is your first two columns of the periodic table. So column one and two is for most examples. That's not all the time, but that is for most of the times for introductory chemistry, we tend to see alkali, alkaline, earth metals attached to, hyd to a hydroxide. So if I show you uh, the following, well, I have Na, which is one of our alkali metals, sodium, and that's attached to a hydroxide. How would you go about naming it? Well, quite simple. We write out the metal followed by hydroxide. So we don't actually change anything about the name, which is kind of nice. So if I have sodium, this would be sodium hydroxide. And we don't worry about writing any prefixes or anything else. Uh, the only thing we have to worry about is charges. So being that we know sodium is a plus one, hydroxide is a negative one, that's not too bad at all. Let's try a different one. What if I gave you barium uh, hydroxide? How would I go and, I, and, and hydroxide? How would I go through naming it? Well, how would I name and balance it? Well, barium is a two plus charge. Hydroxide is a minus one charge. So we're gonna swap, drop. Now keep in mind that two is gonna be on the outside of parentheses. So this is gonna become barium and the OH is one polyatomic with a two outside of it. So why don't we show that in red just to match what we had before. So when we name that, it's gonna be barium hydroxide as the name. So it's not too bad when we come to naming. The hardest part is just making sure you balance it. So hydroxide is always in the end. If you see that, that indicates a base. So hydroxides indicate bases. All right, so hydrogens in the front indicate acids. Hydroxides in the back indicate bases. And I hope that this video helped you. If you need any future videos, please like and comment or subscribe and let me know in the future. I hope this helped and I'll see you all later. Thank you. This has been Dr. Dan.